Okay. So thank you all so much for joining and we are continuing our study of the Bhagavad Gita with the shlokas, translations and the meanings. Okay. So let's start with the prayers. Uh, I'm more Shana prayers. I'm sure my Yes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Magyana Timelandasya. Yana Jana Shalakaya. Chakshuru Nilikam Yena. That's me, she Guru Namaha. Nama Um Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Shimate Bhakti Vedanta. Swami Nitti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastya Tade Satarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Amrita Gitadara Shiva Sadi Gauravakavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you, Mataji. Okay, so we are going to revise the verses and at this time I will also ask for the translation. Okay, um, so let's do the previous verse. Okay. Let's do Dhyayato Vishyan Pumsa. So each one of us can take turns. Uh, Asra, do you want us to? Pusha Chaitanya. Ah, oh, yes, Pusha Chaitanya. Yes, go ahead. Jayato Vishayan Pumsa Sangaste Jupajayate Sangat ka, Sangat Sanjayate Kama Kamat Krodha Bijayate. Very good. Do you want to try the translation? Let's do this. I will. Um, Hare Krishna Mataji. Can I? Yes, 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 yes. Asara, you, you, do you want to try the translation? Uh, yes, Mataji. I can do both. Yes, yes. Do the verse and then the translation. Dhyayato vishayan gumsha sangaste shubha jayate sangat sanjayate kama kama krodo vishayate Very good, very good. While contemplating the object, develops attachment for them. And from such attachment, lust develops. And from lust, anger arises. Thank you. Very good. Mata, I think I can do yes. a translation too. Yes, do it, do it, yes. Okay. I want, can I do it in my own words? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. So, while thinking of a sense object, uh -huh. attachment develops, and from attachment, lust develops, and from lust, anger develops. Good. Good job. Very nice. Very nice. So, you all remember the scheme very nicely. Rishi, do you want to try any of the verses? Um, I can do 2.3. Yes, please go ahead. Dei nityam avadhyoyam. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Tasma sarvani bhutani. Tam sojya parati. Awesome, very nice, very nice. Rishi, do you want to do the translation of any of these verses? Or any of the verses, or at least just the meaning of what you learned, do you remember? The soul can never be broken, only your skin and the outside can be, but, and, but the soul can never be oh, Very nice, very nice, Rishi. Thank you so much. Yes, is this Aditya or Varun? Varun. Varun, very nice. Try. Which one do you want to do? Uh, 62. Okay. Yayato Vishyan Pumsa. Go ahead. Yayato Vishyan Pumsa. Sangat Vishyan Pumsa. Ajayato 
Very nice. And translation meaning? While contemplating the objects of the senses, and devil of the and from such a life, Very good. Good job. Um, Hare Krishna Mataji, can I do two point four? Yes, who's this? Anmol. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Nehe Vikram Natoti, Prasevayona Vikirde, Savam Apti, Ajidharma Sya, Trayate Mahubayata. Ayah. Translation, you want to try meaning? Oh, uh, sure. Okay. Um, in this endeavor, there is no lack or diminution. And a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous fears. Oh, very good. Good job. Nice. Uh, Harsha wants to say 2.4. Yes, Harsha. So nice to hear you. The other side asked me, Kabbadil, Eke Guru Nandana, Ahusha, Kahi Anantaksha, with the Yogya Vasahina. Very good, Harsha. Harsha, do you know the meaning? No. That's okay, but you did so well. Very nice, very nice. And then we have, uh, oh, uh, did Aditya try? Okay. can Rinda go? Yeah, yeah. Very good job, Brinda. You did awesome. Good job. Uh, and uh, Krishna Chaitanya, you finished, right? Okay. And we are left with uh, Aditya. Aditya? Okay. I think he's not around. Okay. So, did we finish everyone? There's one more person I see. Uh, did we finish everybody? Okay. okay. Let's assume we have finished everyone. So, thank you all so much. All of you are learning so nicely. You're learning the meanings. And you're explaining the words so nicely. So, very, very nice to hear from all of you. Thank you. Okay. So, we are moving on to our next verse in the series. Okay. And the previous verse, we saw what happened in the previous verse. Anyone can say the chain of reactions of the previous verse? Mataji. Ah, it's like, isn't it when, uh, when we get attached to sense object, we uh, develop lust for them, and then from lust, uh, the anger arises? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, when we see the sense object, we contemplate on it, we develop some kind of attachment, there is lust, and then if we are not getting that particular object, anger arises. So that is where we stopped in our previous session, right? That was the chain of reaction of unrestricted senses. So when senses are unrestricted, that was the chain of reaction that we saw. But the chain didn't stop there. It continues in our next verse. So that is Bhagavad Gita 263. Okay, so please repeat after me. Krodat Bhavati Krodat Bhavati Samodha Krodat Bhavati Samoha Krodat Bhavati Samoha Krodat Bhavati Samoha Krodat Bhavati Samoha Sammohat smriti bhibhrama. 
स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रमशादुद्दीनाशो स्मृति भ्रमशादुद्दीनाशो स्मृति भ्रमशादुद्दीनाशो बुद्धि नाशाद प्रणश्य बुद्धि नाशाद प्रणश्य बुद्धि नाशाद प्रणश्य क्रोधाद्भवति सम्मोह सम्मोहा स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रमशादुद्दीनाशो बुद्धि नाशाद प्रणश्य क्रोधाद्भवति सम्मोह सम्मोहा स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रमशादुद्दीनाशो बुद्धिनाशाद प्रणश्य so again we can start with taking turns krishna chaitanya so da bhavati samoha स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रंशादुद्दीनाश बुद्धि नाशाद प्रणश्य वेरी गुड वेरी गुड आश्रम क्रोधाद्भवति सम्मोह सम्मोह स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रंशादुद्दीनाशो बुद्धि नाशाद प्रणश्य क्रोधाभवति सृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रम स बुद्धि न सो बुद्धि न सैंक यू वेरी नाइस हर्ष Asha will pass. He will do next week. Okay. Uh, then we have Rinda. Mataji, she don't know this word, Mataji. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, we we'll do Aditya. Krodha Bhavati Samu Moha Samu Smriti Le. स्मृति भ्रमशादुद्दीनाशोद्दीनाशाद प्रणश्य क्रोधाभवति सम्मोह सम्मोह स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति बंगाशुद्दीनाशो बुद्दीनाशाशति वेरी गुड वेरी नाइस ऑल ऑफ यू डिड वी फिनिश 
Okay, excellent, good job. So now we are going to see some keywords here. Okay, so the meaning of krodhat is from anger. Okay, krodha means anger. Samoha, samoha means perfect illusion. Prabhupada <laughs> translates it as perfect illusion. Samohat from illusion. So samoha means basically illusion. And smriti, smriti, shruti, you might have heard these words, smriti and shruti. Smriti means from the memory. You might have heard of words like smarana, all that comes from memory. So therefore smriti means memory. Vibhrama. Brahma means bewilderment. Okay, there are two words. Remember this. Brahma is different. Brahma is different. When you write B H R A M A, it's Brahma. Okay. When you write B R A H E M A, it is Brahma. So they are totally two different uh, uh, words. Hmm? Uh, Brahma is a personality. Brahma is actually bewilderment. So here. It is written as Vibhrama. Vibhrama means to be bewildered. Hmm? Then Buddhi Nasha. Buddhi Nasha means loss of intelligence. What We all know what is Buddhi, right? It's a common word that is used in most Indian languages. Intelligence. Hmm, intelligence. Nasha means destroy, right? So therefore Buddhi Nasha means destruction of intelligence or loss of intelligence. Okay. Prana Shati is one false term. Okay. So what is this word saying? This is a continuation of our previous chain of reaction. So in the previous chain of reaction, we stop with anger. So from contemplating the objects of the senses, there is some sense of attachment. From some sense of attachment, what happens? Lust develops. From lust, anger develops. What happens after that is what we are seeing here. Okay. So repeat the translation after me. From anger. From anger. Complete delusion arises. Complete delusion arises. And from delusion. And from delusion. Bewilderment of memory. Bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered. Intelligence is lost. Intelligence, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again to the material pool. One falls down, one falls down again into the material world. Okay, so we are going to do the translation at a shot. From anger, complete delusion arises. And from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the pool, into the material pool. Okay, say that together, all of you. From delusion arises, and from delusion the bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Very good. So now we are going to think about this translation and understand it better. Okay. So in our previous session, we began to talk about what is the consequence of having unrestricted senses. What is the chain of reaction that follows unrestricted senses? And we saw that the chain of reaction actually begins with uh, objects of the senses, contemplating on the objects of senses, which means you go, you see something that is desirable, you like it very much. Like we saw in the previous session, we saw that a boy goes to a toy shop and he's seeing all these different kinds of toys and he's thinking about it over and over. He comes back home, he develops some kind of attachment towards it and as the attachment for that object grows, he develops lust, intense want to have that object okay and the next part of the reaction was what happened after lust developed after lust developed and mm -hmm. the lust was not fulfilled that is someone else came and took away the object anger arises 
So this is what we saw in our previous session. Mm -hmm. Now, and we also saw the example of Ravana. What was Ravana? Who was Ravana lustful after? Sita. Sita. Very good. So therefore, we saw in the previous session that Ravana he heard from Shurpanaka about Sita. He contemplated on Sita. And he developed some kind of attachment and from that lust developed and he kidnapped Sita. And eventually, of course, he got angry because he understood that he, Rama is going to take away Sita. Okay. So this was the chain of reaction that we saw with the example of Ravana. Now, what is happening after anger? What is the remaining part of the reaction? What happens after anger? Mm. So, we see that from anger, the first step is delusion. Delusion means one is not able to discriminate between what is right and what is wrong. So, when you are extremely angry, just imagine when you are extremely angry about something. Are you able to think properly when you are extremely angry? You are not able to discriminate between what is correct and what is wrong. Right? So, from anger, delusion arises. So, you see the chart here. You see the first part, you know, from here. You can follow the chart from anger. Okay? Because the second verse is talking about what happens after anger. So, after anger, what happens? It is delusion. You see that here. Okay? So, basically, delusion means... You are not able to distinguish between what should be done and what should not be done. So, after that what happens? There is bewilderment. That means one doesn't, bewilderment of memory means one doesn't remember what is the right thing to do. Okay, he has learned the good values, but he is not able to remember what is the right value I should hold on to. How should I behave? What should I do? That memory is lost for that person because he is deluded. He is not able to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. So therefore, he has lost his memory on the right thing to do. He has lost his memory on the right values. And once the memory is lost, uh, what happens is he has loss of intelligence. Loss of intelligence. Means he doesn't resolve to the correct practice because he is unable to discern what to do. He ends up doing something wrong because his intelligence is lost. So therefore, we see how you know by contemplation on the objects of the senses, it's such a huge chain, and one finally falls down. So this is something all of us have experienced. So when we are very, very angry about something and, you know, we are extremely upset about something, what kind of reaction do we give? Are we able to take a very nice, wise decision when we are angry? Or are we reacting like, you know, we don't have any logical thinking or, you know, we are totally messed up, right? When we are angry, uh, we have no control over our senses. We are extremely upset. We are just shouting. We are just saying something. Right? And there is no logic to what we do. There is no logic in our behavior. That's what happens when you get angry. Krishna is explaining this. Okay. Now, let's see the story of Dhruva Maharaj and Ambarish. So, anyone knows the story of Dhruva and Ambarish? What happened between them? Yes, Mother Jaina. Yes, Um. So, Amrish Maharaj uh, did a Kadashi mm -hmm. and when he, um, when he was going to, the day he was going to break a Kadashi, the Rasamani came with many people and when he came, he, he asked for, like Amrish Maharaj said he was going to serve him and, but th before that, the Rasa went to the water to take to bathe and the time for breaking the fast was coming mm. and an Ambrish March had to either break the fast for Ekadashi or not break it and then so they he decided to break the fast mm -hmm. and 
it was just with water because mm. it's not considered as food. And the Rasamuni, he's a sage, so he knows what everything what happened. Mm. So he got angry and he made a big monster come. Mm. And Krishna Maharaj just prayed to Krishna, and Sudarshan Chakra came and attacked. The, uh, attacked uh, the Rasamuni, and the Rasamuni fled to ev fled all over the world. He mm. went to Brahma Loka, but Brahma said that he can't do anything because the Sudarshan Chakra is too powerful. Then the Rasamuni went to Shiva, but mm. but Shiva said that the the Sudarshan Chakra is too powerful. So uh, the Rasamuni went to Vishnu, and Vishnu said. First, go beg forgiveness from Ambrish March, and then, uh, and then the Rasmud he went to Ambrish March and begged forgiveness, and Ambrish March said some prayers, and the uh, Sudarshan Chakra went away. Fantastic! Very nice, very nicely said. Very nice story. Good, good Krishna Chaitanya. So we saw the reaction of Durvasa. What happened with Durvasa? Because Durvasa was upset, he was angry, right? He was angry with Ambarish. He was thinking, what is this Ambarish Maharaj? He's not being respectful towards me. He drank water before receiving the guest. What kind of attitude is this? So he got angry. And because he got angry, he didn't have the right discrimination of what was right and what was wrong. Okay? He didn't know what to do. And from that bewilderment, he lost, the, you know, uh, he, lo he developed loss of remembrance. Wait, hold on. Yeah. So from that bewilderment, he developed loss of remembrance. And from that loss of remembrance, he had loss of intelligence. And when he had the loss of intelligence, he fell down again. And then the Sudarshan Chakra chased him and he had to face the Sudarshan Chakra. So you see, just with anger, what all happened in the case of Durvasa? Okay, first he had anger. Okay, from anger, uh, he didn't have the right discrimination of, you know, whether I should honor uh, Ambarish or I should, you know, uh, punish him. He was he didn't have the right discrimination. Because of that, he chose to actually punish Ambarish. Okay, he shouldn't have done that. If he had the right discrimination, he would have understood that whatever Ambarish did was actually not wrong. Whatever Ambarish did was not wrong. He did follow the rules and he only took water. There was no mistake on Ambarish's side. So therefore, Durvasa, in his anger, he did not have the right discrimination. What had to be done? He was totally bewildered. And because of his bewilderment, there was loss of memory. He didn't realize, oh, the scriptures are telling that the, uh, Andresh Maharaj could break Ekadasi at that time, between, in that stipulated time, just by drinking water. And yet, there was no fault on his part. He didn't have the right memory. So he didn't have, remember the memory from scriptures, Smriti Vibhrama. Okay, from that what happened, he lost the resolve for the right spiritual practice. As a sage, what he must have done, he must have honored Ambarisha and he must have gone and had his lunch with Ambarish Maharaj. But he lost his resolve and instead he took out a hair from his head and he created a monster, he created a demon that would actually attack Ambarish. Therefore, he fell down. He fell down from his position because the Supreme Lord got extremely upset with what Durvasa did and he sent his Sudarshan Chakra to chase Durvasa. So this is a classic example of one, what happens when one gets angry. Okay? When one gets angry, there is such a huge chain of reaction. So therefore, we must be extremely careful. Now, let's see the story of... Shami Krishi and Shringi. Anyone knows the story from Bhagavatam? Uh, yes, Mataji, I know the story. Yes, tell me, Mataji. Um, so, one day Mataji was going out and he was hunting with his um, 
Kingsman, and then he got very thirsty, so he found the sage, and he asked the sage, he asked uh, one sage for water, but the sage, he was in, like, in big chant, like, in a very deep trance, uh, because he was also a very great devotee, and, uh, he didn't hear, uh, Parshik Maharaj's words and Parshik Maharaj she got very mad so he found like a dead snake and he wrapped you around the uh, sage before he left mm-hmm. and uh, when the sage he, the sage had one son <coughs> Shingi, and when he found out that Maharaj Parishit did that to his father he cursed Maharaj Parishit and said that you only have seven days to live and then on this uh, after seven days you'll be bitten by a snake bird and die very good, good. Very nicely said. So therefore, this is the story of actually Parikshit Maharaj, how Parikshit Maharaj was cursed uh, to die in seven days. And that was the birth of the Sri Bhagavatam. So this story is very interesting. Just like how Asra said, there was a great sage uh, by the name Shamik Rishi, and he was performing austerities. He was in meditation. At that time, Parikshit Maharaj came by his ashram, and Parikshit was extremely thirsty, like how she explained. So since he he felt that the sage was not uh, you know receiving him properly, because he was so troubled by thirst, he just put a dead snake on the sage and he went away. Seeing that, you see in the second picture, this little boy who's the son of Shani Krishi, he came and he saw that there was a dead snake wrapped around his father's neck. So he got extremely upset and he and he cheats to die in seven days. So because he cursed, okay, unnecessarily, there was no necessity for Shringi to pronounce a curse. Now these Brahmins in those days, they were extremely, extremely powerful. If they curse someone, that curse would come true. So there was no necessity for Shringi to curse Parikshit, but Shringi cursed. Therefore, there was actually a reaction to that curse. And Shringi also received a bad reaction. The bad reaction that Shringi received was that from that day onwards, all the Brahmanas in the age of Kali, they lost their powers. They lost their great powers and they lost their culture as well right after this wrong action performed by a Brahmin. So therefore you see, they were in this chain. Who was angry? This little boy, he became angry. And from anger, there was delusion. From delusion, there was loss of memory. He didn't remember the correct, uh, you know, scriptural details. And he lost his intelligence. Is this how a Brahmin boy should behave? No, he lost his intelligence. And therefore, he pronounced a curse. And because of that, there was a huge loss. After that, all the Brahmanas, they both lost their great powers and they lost their uh, ability to stick to their culture. Okay? So this is another example of this chain of reaction that happens after one gets angry. Hmm. Do you see this? Who do you see here in this picture? Jambavan. Who was Jambavan? Uh, the devotee of Lord Ram, a bear devotee of Lord Ram. Very good. He was a bear devotee of Lord Ram. And what happened with him when uh, he saw Krishna? Um, he saw because he was angry, so angry, so he lost his Because Krishna wanted to take um Jambavan's son, um. The Jambavan son had the Shamataka jewel and Krishna wanted to take it back to prove that he didn't steal the Shamataka jewel. So um so Jambavan so Jambavan got mad just because Krishna was just trying to steal the jewel even though it was for a good cause and they fought. Mm. Very good, Krishna Chaitanya. Did Aditya also want to say, Aditya or Varun, who was that? Someone wanted to say something. Uh, Aditya. Ah, Aditya, what did you want to say? So yeah, I just wanted to say that um, uh, Krishna came to take the Shamataka jewel from Jambavan's son. And then hmm. Jambavan got really mad at Krishna because he was trying to steal it. Hmm. But then... <laughs> 
they fought for a long time, and finally, I think Jambavan realized that um, uh, he was fighting against Krishna, and then I think he gave this to Yeah, very good. Both of you, Krishna Chaitanya and Aditya, excellent. Yeah, so Jambavan, uh, he didn't recognize his master. He didn't recognize that this Krishna is not different from Ram. Why? Because he was angry. When you are angry, this is what happens. So, it is not good to react, you know, when you are angry. It is better to, you know, uh, to not react when you are angry. Like in the case of uh, this uh, Shringi, you see that he took a wrong decision when he was angry. It would have been better if he had thought about it. If he had thought about the situation and given it some time instead of reacting spontaneously like that, instead of just pronouncing a curse like that. And you see in the case of Jambavan what happened. He went on fighting and fighting and fighting because he was angry. He didn't remember anything. There was bewilderment of memory. His intelligence was lost. And he was just fighting till finally he realized after a long fight of 28 days, he realized that this is my Lord Ram. Because at one point he just gave up. He was thinking, oh, this fight is not ending. Whoever is fighting with me is so powerful. And then he got the realization that this is none other than Lord Ram. So therefore, when we are angry, it is not a good thing to react, you know, to react or to do something in a haste. We should be very, very careful when we are angry. It is better to step back and take some time. Okay, and think properly for ourselves. Because when we are extremely angry, we get very bewildered and there is loss of intelligence. Okay. So having said that, we are saying we should not get angry. Right? It is so difficult. Right? How many of us cannot get angry? It is extremely difficult. It is very difficult uh, to artificially control anger. So when we are in a situation where we are extremely angry, it would be better to take a step back, okay, take a step back, don't react immediately, take a step back, think about it, and then after you've cooled down, you can handle the situation nicely. Okay, that is the best thing to do. Okay, so, and to develop this attitude of controlling anger, you know what you must do? You must develop the art of tolerance. Okay, because it is said, Prabhupada often says the statement, he says, one's greatness is estimated by one's ability to tolerate provoking situations. So the more tolerance you develop, the better you can handle anger. Just like Prahalad Maharaj. So Prahalad Maharaj, he was in probably one of the worst situations. For small things we all get angry. But just imagine what all Prahlad had to go through. His own father, his own father was torturing him. You all know the story of Prahlad. How much problems Prahlad faced because of his father. His father, you know, he, he tried to kill him by fire, pushing him down from a mountain, putting him inside a room full of snakes. He put him in fire. He tried so many things. He did so many things. But still... Prahlad was very tolerant. You know, he was taking shelter of the Lord even under so much provoking situations. So one's greatness is actually estimated by one's ability to tolerate provoking situations. For small, small things, we should not get provoked and get angry like that. It is very important for us to develop tolerance just like Prahlad Maharaj. Okay? But however... Again, having said that, tolerance is also not easy. We just don't get it overnight, right? You no, know, it, it takes time. So anger management, it's a very gradual process. So we have to develop tolerance over a period of time. It cannot be done artificially. You cannot say, okay, I will count to 10 and my anger will go down. It will not go down. So one thing is to step back from that scene, okay? To control your anger. First thing is avoid reacting immediately, okay, and develop tolerance. So, tolerance also 
is developed within us over a period of time. What uh, you know, tolerance comes only when the heart is satisfied. When you feel satisfied with from within. How do you feel satisfied in the heart? How do you feel satisfied from within? When there is a lot of inner fulfillment. When you feel extremely happy inside. That is when tolerance is developed. Okay. And what is the process of developing this inner fulfillment? It is of course through the process of devotion. And the chief methods are chanting the holy names. Make it a regular practice to chant at least one round, you know, in a fixed time, in a regular pattern every day. Okay? And also try to eat prasadam as much as possible. So, when you just eat prasadam, when you eat the remnants of the Lord, that is when you offer prasadam to the Lord and eat only prasadam, when you chant the holy names, slowly over a period of time, you develop a lot of goodness, the quality of goodness. You remember, right? What are the three modes? What are the three modes of material nature? So among the three, goodness is actually the best. So how do you develop this quality? Unless you have the quality of goodness, how will you get tolerance? Unless your tolerance, sorry, unless you develop tolerance, how can you control anger, right? So therefore, it is good to develop this quality of goodness and even transcend to the quality of pure goodness by doing devotional service. So, when we chant the holy names, when we eat prasadam, these are small tips. When we inculcate this in our life regularly over a period of time, we, in contact with Krishna, develop qualities like Him. So therefore, in His association, we can surely transcend even the mode of goodness. And therefore, over a period of time, tolerance is developed. When tolerance is developed, anger control becomes very, very easy. So it's a gradual process. So we can do it by following these principles very sincerely. It will happen over a period of time. Okay. And if at all we are in a situation where the, you know, the, where something is very provoking, we just cannot avoid getting angry, don't take any decision or don't blurt out anything. Walk away from there, think with a cool head and then handle the situation. Okay? So, this is the chain that Krishna explains. The chain is from anger, delusion. From delusion, bewilderment of memory. From bewilderment, loss of intelligence. And because of loss of intelligence, finally, one falls down into the gross material existence. What's the, or example, what's the example of the falls down into gross material existence? What's the meaning of falling down into the material pool or gross material existence? There is a fall down into the cycle of actually... See, when you do something wrong and there is a fall down, uh, you're actually caught on to the cycle of birth and death again. Falling down into the pool of material existence means that you're in this chain again and again. So one falls into the uh, pool of material existence. That is actually the samsara. You know, when you say samsara, samsara means the cycle of birth and death. So it continues. You know, the problem continues. There's no end to the problem. You begin all over from again. You cannot of the problem. Okay. Did that help? Who asked the question? Did that help? Krishna Chaitanya. Yeah. Did the answer help you? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. So let's do the translation again. Um, anyone? Yeah, actually all of you can do the verse and the translation together. You can take turns and do it together. Okay. Aditya, you want to start? Okay. Krodas Bhavati Sammoha Sammohasmati Vibramaha Smati Bhamsharad Buddhi Nasho Buddhi Nasharad Pranashyati 
From anger, complete delusion arises, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When the memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost, and then and when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Fantastic, very nice. Uh, Varun. No, that Bhavat is from anger, complete delusion arises, and from delusion, the woman memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is, is lost, and when intelligence is lost, one falls down and gets into the material pool. Very good, very nice. Anmol? Hi, Krishna. Um, Krodha Bhavati Sammoha, Sammoha Kneti Bhagada, Kneti Pamsha Bhuti Nasha, Bhuti Nasha Panachati. Um, from anger, complete delusion arises, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. <coughs> And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Very good. Hare Krishna Mataji, can I check? Yes, Astra. Krodha Bhavati Samoha Samoha Smriti Vibramaha Smriti Bramshad Buddhi Nashor Buddhi Nashad Pranashati. From anger, complete illusion arises, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. When intelligence is lost, one falls down the one fall down one falls down again into the material pool. Thank you, Mother. Very good. Good. Mataji Krishna Chaitanya. Yes, Krishna Chaitanya. Krodad Bhavati Samoha Samoha Tviti Vibrama Smriti Bramsad Buddhina So from anger, complete delusion arises, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Very good. Good. And who else do we have? Vitya, Varun, Asra, Anmol. Uh, Krishna Chaitanya, Brinda, uh, Mataji. Brinda. Mataji, Brinda, don't know Mataji, she will learn next week. Okay, Anmol, did you say something? Oh, yeah, I was just saying uh, Brinda, if we were asking. Oh, you said Brinda, okay, very good. Good, Rishi and Harsha, I don't see them, maybe some problem. And who else? That's all. Okay, good. Very nice. Come with the Kimataji. Hare Krishna. Okay. She's on mute. Okay. So then we are good. So uh, one of you, can you just say the chain of reaction after anger? Um, Mataji, could I? Yes, I'm on. Uh, after anger, then delusion comes, and then from delusion, you get bewildered. Uh, from memory, and then when your memory is the other, then you lose your intelligence and mm. your train of thought and everything, and then you fall down again into the world. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So, can someone tell the entire chain from the beginning, from uh, contemplating on the objects of senses, from there till now? Mataji, yes, yes. From contemplation, attachment, then. then from attachment, lust develops. From lust, um. anger, then um. illusion. From um. illusion, loss of memory. When um. memory is bewildered, intelligence um. is lost. Um. And when intelligence is lost, you fall down back into the material world. Very good. Good job. People. <laughs> very good, all of you. Very nice. Very nice. Anyone else wants to say anything? Any realizations? Any thoughts? You want to share? 
Mataji, I had a question. Is this where it ends or is it just like the middle? Can you be a little louder? Oh, is this like where it ends, like where like all this change of reaction ends or is this like the middle part? No, 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 this ends with, once you fall into the material pool, you have to start the cycle again. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Mataji, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so, does that mean originally uh, we were all with Krishna, but then, like, we had to overcome all this and then come down to the material pool? Or was it, like, um... Uh, so, this actually doesn't have any connection to the fall down of the jiva or something. This, These two verses, they don't have any connection to that. This is more about Krishna explaining a cycle of events that happen, you know. you How you actually get into the cycle of, you know, fall down and then uh, trying to progress, fall down, like that. It has nothing to do with the jiva falling from the spiritual world or something. They are like unconnected to these. I mean, it doesn't mean that in the spiritual world, you know, you had contemplation of the objects of senses or something. Okay. Okay, okay Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, nice, very nice questions. Good. Okay. So we can end the call then. Thank you all so much for joining. Vancha Kadupata Rubesh <laughs> and all the devotees, Kijai, Hare Krishna. Okay.